So I have always wanted to have as many keybinds as possible, so I don't need to use the mouse as much. And in the end I used hit a roadblock, because normal editors don't let you do this as easily. So I started to look into Vim, and I noticed that everything they do is with the keyboard, so I gravitated towards that and want to learn more. Now forwarding a couple of months, and I've actually gotten it to work really nicely with Flutter. And of course who doesn't want to be the guy that turns the mouse upside down and just sits with the keyboard all day. So now let's get into it and look into how I set everything up and how it's actually working. If you like this kind of videos, make sure to like and subscribe. I will have a full write up over at robertbrunager.com. And of course, make sure to smash the like button and let's get into it. So I will not go into specifically how do you install Vim, as that is different for every platform. But we have the init Vim because we're using NeoVim, which will contain all of our configurations and keybinds as well as our plugins. So a plugin is pretty much used as a visual code extension. By adding those, you will add some kind of functionality to Vim. So by no means, you don't have to use all of those that I use, but I will just go through them anyway. So for file and folder management, I have two main ones, which is Nurture and Fuzzy Finder. The Fuzzy Finder will let me use Ctrl P and search for files. And for Nurture, which is used the side explorer to find and navigate to folders and files. For snippets, will just give me the basic functionality of snippets that I mostly use in Flutter, for example, stateless widget and stateful widgets and so on. I will show that later on. For language supports, the main ones here are COC as well as auto pairs. I will go into COC soon, but auto pairs just open and close the brackets where I want them. For Dart support, I use Dart Vim plugin, and for TypeScript, we can ignore in this case. I am very familiar with Git on the terminal, so I usually use Vim Fugitive and Vim Airline for Git integration. Vim Fugitive pretty much gives me the terminal commands in Vim, and Vim Airlines give you the bar at the bottom which shows the branch, etc. And Groovebox is just the theme that I'm using. That's all for the plugins, then comes all of my settings. All of these are very personal, but I will add a link in the description where you can find all of my configuration settings, and you can find and use that if you want to, and you can edit them and get them to your liking. So if we go down a bit, we will see some more key maps and settings. So in Vim, you have something called a leader key, which will just bind it to something that makes you get more keys, pretty much. I've bound that to space, which means that I can do different key binds with space as the first key. So for example, if I open the explorer or nurture with control B, I can navigate back and forth nurture and the editor with space H and space L. After that, I've just set some configurations for when you save, I wanted to format it with 120 line length. After that, I have some more keybinds. So for example, if I press GD, I will go to the definition and GR will go to references. And then for example, using RN or leader RN, which is in this case space RN, I would rename. I also have this nice function. So if you press shift K, you will get up the documentation pop-up for the specific thing you're on. And here's my key bind for Fuzzy Finder, which is just Ctrl P, which lets me search for files in the project. And here I used to have additional key binds for Git. So if you don't use Git in the terminal, you don't really have to bother with that. But this just lets me do, for example, space GS, and I will get Git status. In this case, this is not a repo, so we'll just get a red warning. And the next one, as I'm used to using VS Code, I have using tabs for tabbing through the snippets. So this will just let me tab between the different sections of a snippet. I have the same for TypeScript, so you don't have to have that if you don't want to. Also, I've mapped control space to open the autocompleter for COC. I also have leader A, which is pretty much like control dot for visual code and alt space for IntelliJ. And COC lets me get the different language supports and extensions that I want. So in this case, I want, for example, Flutter, as well as some snippets and YAML. A lot of these are used in my web project as well. That's why you can see CSS, HTML, and JSON, and so on. 
This just marks if a file is changed in Nurture, and the last one just specific to TypeScript once again. Now when we have seen all of these configurations, let's see what we can actually do with all of this. So I've gone ahead and created a new project and we can navigate to that by just navigating with the terminal and then going nvim and then dot, which will open the current directory in NeoVim. I will navigate to the main file and here we can see the typical Flutter application with no changes yet. Now the first thing we usually want to do is just start application. You can see here that I have Windows as the selected platform automatically. So I will just be able to run the coc command of flutter run, but you can also add dash dash device and then select any kind of device that you want to run on. And of course, if I want to see the command or the debug window, I can just do space gd and then I will be able to see the debug window. To quit that, I will just do colon q to quit it. Now when we have all of this, I will just show some basic usages for using NeoVim. So first off, let's just go down to the colors and we can see that if we try to change the color from blue, we can see that we get the auto support or auto pop-up for, for example, selecting a red color. And of course, now you'll be able to see that in the application as well. So I will not really go into how you use Vim. If you want a specific video on how to learn Vim and how to use the keybinds and so on, just let me know and I will create that. But of course, we get that awesome no mouse experience. So for example, if I want to change the title with these, these quotations, I can do C and I for change inside and then do the quotation, which means that I will change inside the quotation and write a new message. So let's say that you want to create a new widget now. I will use Nurture to navigate to the lib folder and inside the lib folder, I can just press M and this will give up the settings for the Explorer. Here I can click add node. So I will just create a node of features and then I will do backslash and then create the file. So in this case, the file will just be myfeature.dart in this example. So now we can just navigate into that file and of course, when we create a new file in Flutter, we usually want to create some kind of widget. So in this case, we can use the snippet stateless. And this does like any other editor, we will just create the specific widget that we want. In this case, we can just hit leader A, which will give us the suggestion window. And here we can select that we want to import material, for example. Here we can do all of the things we want. For example, we can switch out the container for a scaffold. I don't really care about the code here, so I will just make a body of a simple container. But as you can see here, we also get up the documentation window for the different widgets that we have selected. When that is done, we can use the fuzzy finder, which I have bound to control P, and we can search for the file that we want to go to or navigate to. And in this case, I just want to navigate to main.dart. Now in this case, we can just navigate down to the place that we want to use that custom widget. We can write it and we get the auto complete for that specific widget we just created. And for example, when we get a error, we can just have our curse on top of it and we can see that we don't have something defining this, which means that we haven't added the import for it. So by just hitting leader A, we can select which way we want to import this file. And now all that is done, we can save and we can navigate to the top of the file again, which we can see the import. If for example, if we switch the places for the import, we can use the auto suggestions or leader A, and we can use the organize import and we will have our package imports at the top. So here is a simple example of what we can do without using a mouse. Let's say we want to remove this title field. So let's go down to the title. We can press double D to remove that. We will also remove the comments while we're at it. And then we can remove the parameter for the constructor. I just use DW here for delete word. And then we can delete inside the parentheses. So D I and then the parentheses. And then we can save and now that's done. Now, of course, with our keybinds, we can also do GD to go to definition. And here we are in the file of the widget. We can also do gr to find references. And here we can see all of the places that our class is used. In this case, it's only main.dart. 
The other reference is just this file that we're currently in. Now, I probably know what you're thinking. Let's say that you have a widget and you want to wrap it with a center or wrap it with a column. Well, we have that support as well. So if you press leader AW, you will get the support or choose the action for that word. So here in this case, we can, for example, wrap with column, wrap with center, remove widget and wrap with padding. So in this case, we just wrap with padding. And of course, this is as any other place, we can change the padding so we can navigate inside the parentheses, change inside the parentheses and change it to something like 12. And of course, we have the other functionality as well. So for example, we can remove the widget that we want to remove. So in this case, we can just remove the padding widget. I hope you liked this video. It's taken me quite a while to actually get the setup that I actually want. And if you want to see a more in-depth tutorial or a tutorial in general on how to use NeoVim or Vim, let me know down in the comments. So if you like this video, like and subscribe. And as well, you can check out Patreon if you want to support me. I have a bunch of different nice perks. And now while you're at it, why not check out one of these other videos coming up on the screen right now. And I will see you in the next one.